Are you thinking about buying a home but don't have the funds to pay all cash? Are you trying to figure out which loan product might work best for you? We are often asked, how much cash do I need for a down payment? Well, the answer, like many things in life, it depends. This video will cover the five uh, main loan types available to you, along with your down payment options for each of those. And then if you stick around until the end, we also have some bonus information for you on buying a home. So traditionally, there are five types of loan products that make up the loan market. Those are conventional, jumbo, FHA, VA, and USDA. And they all have their own advantages and disadvantages depending on your circumstances and situation. So that's why it's really important at the very beginning of the process to talk to a knowledgeable and local lender in your area to discuss which, fit, which option might fit best for you. And throughout this video, we're going to just highlight some of the uh, uh, attributes of each of those loan types, some pros and cons. But do remember, we, we are not lenders, and so we're not going to give, and we can't give lending advice, but we can put you in contact with professionals who can. This one, this, the idea of this video is just giving an overview of the different loan products that are out there. And then we'll do uh, more detailed uh, videos on each of those products coming up shortly so that uh, you can go more in depth on, on one, those that you're interested in. Yeah. When you talk about home loans, conventional loans are what most people think of. Conventional loans have a maximum loan limit. And at the time of this shooting, the anticipated loan limit for 2023 is $715,000. We'll update the comments down below uh, with the actual amount once that has been officially published. That estimated $715,000 loan limit is actually an increase of more than $65,000 from the 2022 loan limit, which is really good news for anyone who is looking at the upper end of that range uh, and needing that to be a little bit higher to afford houses as prices have gone up uh, in the past few years. The other common uh, misconception, I would say, is that for conventional loans, you have to do 20% down. However, you can actually do as low as 3% down on conventional loans, which gives way more flexibility for people who don't have the cash on hand right up front to be able to make that down payment. However, we need to point out that if you do make a down payment of less than 20% on a conventional loan, the bank will tack on what they call private mortgage insurance or PMI. This is a small insurance premium to protect the bank in case you were to default on the loan. Now, the nice thing about that, however, is once you've reached 22% equity in your home, either through the appreciation of the home's value, the payments that you've made, or the combination of the two, you can request that the bank drop that PMI insurance. So your monthly payment will actually go down once you reach that point. Yeah. In addition, for conventional loans, you will likely need a 620 uh, minimum credit score. And this is something that the lender tends to pull right up front so you will know where you are and if you need to do any credit repair work, that can be addressed right from the beginning. There is also something called your debt to income ratio. And for conventional loans, this typically needs to be 50% as a maximum. Uh, your debt to income ratio is calculated by adding up your minimum monthly payments for all of your debt and then dividing it by your gross monthly income. As an example, let's say you have a monthly car payment of $500, a monthly stu student loan payment of $350, and a minimum credit card payment of $250. On top of that, you, your anticipated monthly mortgage payment will be $2,500 per month. Adding all those up, you have a total monthly debt payment of $3,600. In order to stay below the 50% debt to income ratio, your monthly gross income must be at least $7,200. For instance, your monthly gross income of $8,000 per month, then your uh, DTI or debt to income ratio would be 45%. The next type of loan we're talking about is jumbo loans. And those are similar to conventional loans, except they are considered non-conforming because jumbo loans are loans in excess of the $715,000 loan limit that we talked about earlier. Are they in relationship to jumbo shrimp? Because I love jumbo <laughs> shrimp. No? No, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, continue on. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
Oh goodness. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm leaving that in by the way. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> I fully expect that. <laughs> because the loan amounts are higher for these jumbo loans, lenders typically are more stringent in their requirements when it comes to qualifying for the loans. For instance, your minimum down payment is typically in the 10 to 20% range, not 3%. The minimum credit score that you need is often around 700, and the debt to income ratio often needs to be no more than 43%, although this is sometimes even lower, uh, depending on what the lender requirements are. And again, because this uh, loan amount is larger, the lender may expect you to have more liquid cash reserves on hand. This could be as much as 12 months worth of mortgage payments. However, if you're looking to purchase a higher priced property and would like to leverage your money as much as possible, a jumbo loan could be an option for you. The next type of loan is the FHA loan. These are often used by first time home buyers who have lower credit scores or not as much money saved up for a down payment. However, we do need to note that first time home buyer actually applies to anyone if they have not owned a home in the last three years. Weird, right? For FHA loans, you can have a down payment as small as 3.5% if you have a credit score of 580 or higher. If your credit score is between 500 and 579, then the minimum down payment is increased to 10%. As with conventional loans, if you are not putting down that full 20%, then you will pay mortgage insurance premium, or MIP in this case, to protect the lender. In addition, your debt to income ratio needs to be under 43% and the property you are intending to purchase must be used as your primary residence. This means you cannot get an FHA loan if you're planning to rent the house out instead of living in. This is the very quick version of FHA loans and there's a lot more to talk about. So this is one of those where we actually have a whole additional video that goes more in depth on FHA loans for you to check out. Next up are Veterans Administration or VA loans, and these can be used by both current active duty military members and retired military. The highlight of the VA loan is that it is a $0 down loan. You just have to be able to cover your closing costs, but beyond that, you don't have to bring any additional money to the table. Plus, there is no PMI that you're charged for putting down less than 20%, which can save you money on your monthly payment as well. VA loans are also unique in that the VA does not set a minimum credit score or a maximum debt to income ratio. These factors are actually up to the lender to determine and they will likely take into consideration your whole financial picture in determining minimums and maximums. This loan is meant to be used for, primary, for a primary residence, so you won't be able to use the VA loan to buy an investment property. Once again, this is only a short version of the VA loans, so go watch our VA specific video for more information about this loan option. Finally, we have USDA or United States Department of Agriculture loans. These are a niche product that were designed for low income families looking to purchase homes in certain rural areas of the country. USDA loans also allow for zero down, uh, but again, you will have to pay closing costs to purchase the home. Unlike most of the other loan types, for the USDA loan, your adjusted gross income cannot exceed 115% of the median income for the area. The USDA has a map on their website which indicates the areas that this loan can be used in. We will provide a link down below to that USDA map so that you can check out what areas near you are available for these loans. In addition, you'll generally need a credit score of 640 or higher and a debt to income ratio of 43% or less. However, you want to talk to your local lender to see what their requirements are if you're looking to get a USDA loan. Just like the last two loan products, we do a deep dive in another video posted down below. Now that we've covered the various loan types that are available for you uh, to acquire a new home, we wanted to share with you a little bonus item. We have put together a buyer's guide that will lead you through the home buying process. And so might as well be well informed as you get underway. There's a link in the description below to that item, as well as a link to the other more detailed videos on the various loan types uh, that we discussed during this video. 
If you are interested in buying or selling a, a home in the Tucson area, there is an email in the description below so that you can reach out to us. We would be happy to work with you. If you are somewhere else and not interested in moving here, we also have a way to connect you with agents all across the country and even the world. And so there's a link to fill out a form that can help us help you in that process. And with that, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Yeah.